I moved to an old farmhouse about two years ago after spending 40 years of my life in the city. So why the move? Well, I had worked non-stop since graduating college. In my late 20s, I was in love with a man. He proposed two years into our relationship, but I said no even though I loved him deeply. Long story short, he wanted us to have a family. However, my ambition at the time was at an all-time high and there was no way I was putting my career on the back burner to have children. My boyfriend and I, we drifted apart after that and my career blossomed even more when romantic relationships no longer held me back. Fast forward 12 odd years and I was working as a COO of a large corporation by then. I was extremely successful, made more money than I could ever need and I was happy for the most part with what I had achieved up to that point. The only thing that was missing was a family of my own. My friends, though far less successful than me in terms of career, their lives were, how should I say, far richer than mine. Most of them were successful enough to afford a good living. They had children, husbands, and a wealth of memories they shared with them. But my life? I had money and career achievement in excess, but lacked in everything else. All of a sudden, my life felt so empty. I had no one to go home to but two cats and a dog. I found myself talking to my pets all the time and I treated them like they were my children. But pets are pets, they are family, but they could never replace a child of my own. So I quit my job, I wanted to experience life differently. No more working around the clock to keep up with the competition, stop making business relationships and start building personal relationships be closer to nature and stay far away from the skyscrapers and the insane traffic of LA. Hence the move to the old farmhouse in the countryside. Before making the move, I hired professionals to repair everything in and around the house and the farm. I also hired a top-notch security firm to build a panic room. The truth is, I didn't feel all that safe living alone in a remote countryside home. It cost a substantial sum to build it, but it was worth it since it gave me a peace of mind. Last month, so after about two years since moving to my current home, I went into town to grab some tools from the hardware store and overheard a conversation about a man who was killed by some wild animal. They said the man was killed in his own house and his family would have likely suffered the same fate if not for them being out of town with their relatives for that weekend. After hearing that news, I went to the gun store and picked up two boxes of shotgun shells even though I already had eight boxes at home. Before moving to the countryside, I didn't even know how to shoot guns. But out here in the middle of nowhere, it's a must own item. And also, I don't know why, but it makes me feel safe to have plenty of ammo in stash. I went home after I was done shopping. I parked my truck in the barn, which I use as a garage now. I raised chickens in a coop, but that's all the livestock I got for now. Maybe the barn will get to be used properly once I decide to get a horse. Anyhow, I walked up to the porch with the shopping bags in my hands. I was about to step onto the porch when I saw large claw marks on the wooden boards. They looked huge and was nothing like what a coyote could make. We have bears in our state but they're not known to venture near our town. In fact, I've been told that the town hasn't seen a bear in nearly 5 decades. I called a friend who's born and raised in town and knows everything there's to know about it. He told me he was too busy with the farm work on that day and that he'd drop by the next morning to check it out. I said thanks and didn't think much of it until it was time to go to bed. I grabbed my shotgun from the gun safe and placed it right under the bed. It was locked and loaded and ready to pepper anything that would dare to break into my house. I was about to turn off the bedside lamp when I heard the window near the kitchen shatter. I jumped off the bed and grabbed the shotgun right away. I put the safety off, began walking downstairs and my trusty dog was right next to me. I heard the sound of slow footsteps outside of the house. I could tell that the sounds weren't being made by a person. No, the footsteps sounded too substantial to belong to a measly 200 pound human being. 
I walked toward the kitchen, turned on the light, and right away saw something dark and enormous. I fired at it and hit it with two shells at the very least. The thing squealed like nothing I ever heard before and began smashing on the wall around the window. I fired until I emptied the magazine, but the thing wouldn't stop. Instead of reloading from the shotgun shell pouch, I decided to make a run for it to the panic room. I dropped the shotgun, held my dog in my arms, and ran with all of my strength. Once inside, I secured the door and dialed 911 right away. While I was making the call, I heard a thing breaking into the house, but it had no clue of my location. I don't know when the thing left, but it was gone by the time the sheriff had arrived at my house. Unfortunately, the sheriff only saw the destruction left behind by the creature and not the creature itself. As for the destruction, it was incredible. Neither my friend or the sheriff had ever seen a bear do such damage to a property. A portion of the wall in the kitchen was completely knocked out. The creature had literally broken in through the wall. Everyone around town tells me that it must have been a bear. But I had a faint look at the creature when I shot at it, and I can tell you it looked nothing like a bear that I know of. There's also the sound that it was making when it was being shot. The squeals, they sounded more like one that a human voice box would produce than a wild animal's would. It was bizarre. I've been sleeping in the panic room ever since that night. Now I'm considering whether I should sell this place and move elsewhere. You know, all I wanted was to live in the countryside and experience a fuller, richer life. I was so happy out here, but now I get to sleep in a metal box because of a mysterious creature that wants a piece of me. I don't know what to do now. I really don't. Hey guys, Dennis here. Just wanted to tell you guys that this video is about the sample duration of the videos I'll be uploading going forward. I'll make compilation videos for you guys once there's enough videos to make a one hour long compilation. I know many of you guys are disappointed, but I ask you to give this new format a chance. You'll be seeing far more uploads than before. In fact, I think I can surprise you with the number of uploads I can make every week now that I can work with shorter length videos. I travel a lot because of my day job, and oftentimes I end up not being able to upload because of a simple reason that a video may be too short. This new format will allow me to work faster, more efficiently, and given time, I think you guys will enjoy the frequent uploads as well. Anywho, thanks guys for sticking around. Last night, we've lost around 30 subscribers after my announcement, but also gained about 25. It's kind of a new start. But a good one thanks to you guys for giving me a chance with the new upload format. So thank you guys, have a wonderful week, I'll see you on the next one, goodbye for now.